most celebrities, they're, they're doing things to maintain. And the best way to do it is when no one can really tell what you've done. They just think you look really great. You look r- really rested. And so if you are looking to go down that route, again, I think seeing a board certified dermatologist or a facial plastic surgeon, someone who really has the training in this area to be doing your procedures. What if you could reclaim hours of free time each week, create legacy building wealth, and devote more energy to your passion projects without giving up on your career as a life-saving MD. Dr. Vikram Raya is a functional cardiologist, high-performance coach, and real estate expert, is here to give you the tools, strategies, and solutions you need to transform your life, unlock your limitless potential, and achieve greatness, all while freeing up your precious time. Welcome to Limitless MD. Let's dive in. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Limitless MD. I'm your host, Vikram Rai, and today I have a very special guest, Dr. Mary Alice Mina. She is a Harvard-trained, double board-certified dermatologist, and she's doing things outside of her normal realm. She's not just being a dermatologist. She's becoming a thought leader. She's promoting dermatology to different uh, folks all over the country and all over the world with her innovative messages about how to protect your skin, how to do skin minimalism, and so many other strategies. So for the physicians on the podcast, buckle up, get ready. You're going to meet an inspirational leader and visionary. And for the people who really want to anti-age, this is going to be a very powerful podcast as well. So with that said, uh, Dr. Mina, welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's get straight into it. What's your top three piece of advice for someone who wants to like sail into their hundreds and have phenomenal skin? (laughs) Well, um, my top advice would be to start now. And the sooner you can start, the better, right? Because nowadays what we're realizing is that these proactive steps can be so much more impactful than trying to play catch up. And uh, even though we have a lot of amazing devices and lasers and procedures that we can do, really prevention is key. And I love that we're seeing this more in medicine, just in general, instead of being reactive, try to be proactive. So thinking about your skin now, no matter what age you are, is really the first step. And there are so many things that we can do, and this isn't that long a podcast, but I would say just start being, thinking about it now. Think about how you're treating your body. Sometimes we think about our skin as just what you see. And a lot of times we just think about your face. We don't even like think about the rest of our our skin. We just think about our face, what we look like. But our skin is so much more than just your appearance and aesthetics. And while you may notice that the most as you're aging, that your skin really plays so many important roles. And so you can't take care of your skin if you're not taking care of your overall health, your overall body. And so that's why just your overall wellness is critical. You aren't going to have beautiful skin at a hundred or whatever, if you're smoking and you're eating a lot of processed foods and sugars, and you're not exercising and getting good sleep. So again, taking care of your body is really the best way to then see the results in the largest organ that we have, which is our skin. And what else? I mean, there's so many things you can do, but I'm a big proponent. So Dr. Mina, some of the things that I've, you know, come across, you know, in the pursuit of, you know, human optimization and, and skin's a huge part of that is I know water intake is huge. And so I think you know, on the podcast, we really talked about, you know, three liters of water a day. We've talked about, you know, really good sunscreen consistently. We've talked about, um, you know, avoiding excessive sun exposure. We've talked about sleep optimization, nutrient supplements. And, you know, that is a great foundational aspect of it all. What's next? Yeah. So, yeah, you, um, you hit the nail on the head too. My third was going to be sun protection. If you're not protecting your skin from the sun, you are just wasting your time and money. Those are kind of like the, the basics, right? You got to get those foundations first. Then it really just depends on your how you feel, I guess, about anti-aging. Are you someone who really just wants to go au naturel and just let 
let things happen? Or are you someone who um, is going to maybe do procedures and um, treatments and things like that? So it, it just depends and everyone's different and people have different thresholds. Some people are okay with doing injectables like uh, neuromodulators, toxins, Botox, Xeomin, things like that. I think those are a wonderful way to keep your skin looking really good. It also helps you prevent these uh, lines that you get when you are talking and, and making expressions because over time you can get these etched in lines. So that's a great way to um, prevent those lines from forming. It's like working out. The more you are lifting weights, you're going to build that bicep, right? The more you are scaling, you're going to build those deep furrows in between. And doing a little bit of Botox can soften that and help prevent that from appearing. Um, so but you know, there's two buckets. Of... There's the all natural, yeah. which is like, is that what you mean by uh, in some of the literature I've read about you? It's the skin minimalism. Is that what you're referring to? Well, the two, two different buckets or? Yeah, you know, I'm a skin, when I say skin minimalism, what I'm mostly meaning is that you don't need a very complicated skincare routine. You really can keep it as simple as a gentle cleanser, a moisturizer, and sunscreen. That really can be it if you really want to keep it simple. Now, there are other people, and and I even include a, th a few extras in there. I like to do a vitamin C serum in the morning, and I use a vitamin A cream at night. But that's really it for my, my topicals. I'm not someone who has a 10-step routine that takes me 30 minutes. When I pack to go out of town, you know, I just have these tiny, tiny little bag with all my supplies. So what I'm trying to say is that I think people overdo it with the products they're using and they're always on the hunt for the latest, greatest, next amazing product that is being marketed to them. And they don't really give any product time to really work. They're constantly just switching things, switching things. And then they're wondering why they're not seeing the benefits in their skin. Now, I am not au naturel and I, I don't claim to be, but um, so I invest in in office procedures that I know work. And that's kind of where I'd rather put my money in procedures like neuromodulators, fillers, devices, things that I know um, I would rather spend money on that than a $300 cream that is probably not going to give me the results I think it is. Got it. So there's some there's the foundational thing we talked about, which is more of like, you know, general overall health and then sort of skin barrier protection and sort of skin, you know, maintenance. And then there is, you know, the, the layers that you talked about, which is maybe the vitamin A cream, the, uh, the, the, the vitamin C serums, yeah. which is a little bit of a, 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 a sort of a, <laughs> I'm using a real estate term, a value add or some sort of a, yeah. a level up <laughs> next level up. And then if you want to go a little bit further, these, relatively inexpensive in-office procedures can help enhance a person's look and, and feel and perhaps prevent some of those deeper issues that come over time. Exactly. Uh, and you said neuromodulators, and I'm, I'm, I think you're meaning Botox and things yeah. like that, but, and then uh, fillers, can you just give a quick one-liner? What do you mean by fillers? Yeah. So fillers are, they, they fill, right? They add volume. So with age, we know that we, our face goes from a triangle where, let's see, where's your camera, where the, the point is at your chin, and then it gets reversed with aging and you get the jowls and, and, and that heaviness and you people, I just had a lady today tell me, I feel like I'm melting. And so when we do fillers, we're adding volume to areas that are kind of deflating, if you will. It's like filling up a balloon a little bit. Now, I know some people have gone way too far with fillers. And sometimes when I say fillers, they get scared or nervous that they're going to look that have that sort of puffy, pillowy face and not look natural. But fillers, depending on where you do it, how much uh, really can give a natural look. And one of my favorite, it's not really a filler, it's called a biostimulant, is something that uh, stimulate your own collagen in, in oh, the wow. skin. Okay. And typically we use it on the face, but really can use it other places as well. So things like Sculptra, Radius, those things actually boost your own collagen. And I think it gives a really natural result. And by doing these little things, maintenance along the way, you can sort of stave off getting to the point when you're 50, 60, 70, where you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't even recognize who's looking back at me in the mirror. Got it. Got it. Yeah. You know, I just came back from watching uh, Mission Impossible um, and, and everyone talks about 
Tom Cruise and the guy never ages. Yeah. Uh, as a Harvard trained uh, dermatologist, uh, give me your thoughts on what you, what, what you think <laughs> of people like him and other people who are in obviously in the industry or in, in the public eye and they've done something uh, to right. help them. Uh, yeah, re- well, so I am not Tom Cruise's dermatologist, um, but, you know, happy to help if he needs help. But um, he does look great. He he he. I saw him in the Top Gun 2 movie and I thought it, it doesn't look like decades or however long the years have gone by. So he is doing it right now. I would be willing to bet he is doing something right. It, it's virtually impossible for these public figures, these celebrities to go through life and not do anything. They are just they're their look, their aesthetics, it's too important and and too critical to what they do. So um, I always kind of laugh when I hear a celebrity say, well, I've never done Botox. And I'm like, well, you maybe haven't done Botox, but you've probably done Xeomin or Dysport or, you know, you're, you're getting off on a, um, you know, just a a semantic there, but exactly technicality. So I, I would, I would say most celebrities, they're they're doing things to maintain. And the best way to do it is when no one can really tell what you've done. They just think you look really great. You look r- really rested. And so if you are looking to go down that route, again, I think seeing a board certified dermatologist or a facial plastic surgeon, someone who really has the training in this area to be doing your procedures, number one, who really uh, can give the best results and making sure they're trained in whatever you're getting um, done. But I also think doing a little bit along the way prevents that sort of overdone look like when Madonna appeared at, I don't know if it was the VMA or something, she just looked totally different. She didn't look like herself. And that's because she had had a lot of work since the last time people saw her and it didn't look natural. It was overdone. Uh, not saying it was done necessarily badly, but it was just, it was, it, she didn't dramatic. look like herself, like, right? Yeah, you want subtle changes, not dramatic changes. Right. And and maybe some people don't want subtle changes. Some, yeah. There is, there is a market for that sort of overdone or almost caricature look. And some people do want that, but I think probably most people, I know certainly most people in my practice and, and my friends and family they don't want someone to come up to them and say, oh, I, I see you got filler. They just want someone to say, <laughs> you look amazing. Did you just get back from vacation? So Mary Alice, uh, let's, let's switch gears here. Let's talk about you being um, the successful dermatologist in Atlanta doing quite well. And is it your own practice or are you part of a group? What is your current practice? So I, I have a business partner the, and Dr. Mark Bauckham and it's the two of us. Okay, great. And you're starting to sort of make splashes and waves in the physician community as you're starting to step out. You have a podcast. You're starting to get out there and and be in the public eye and in media. And you're educating, you know, patients and, and interested parties all over the country. Um, what made you uh, go beyond being a traditional dermatologist? Yeah. So, well, thanks to people like you and podcasts like you have. And, and really it was COVID. And I, I think COVID changed how a lot of doctors think about how they practice and what they do and where they see their career. I love being a dermatologist. Um, I feel blessed that I'm not suffering from burnout, but you're, you know, no doctor's immune to the hardships and the struggles that we go through with insurance and time crunches and, and everything. So when COVID hit and we never closed down, but we were working, I was working maybe one day a week. Patients did not want to come in. My patients tend wow. to be older when, cause I also do a lot of skin cancer surgery and they were terrified. They were scared. They weren't coming in. And we kept our whole staff employed and everyone there. And it made me realize, look, if I'm not working and seeing patients, I'm not bringing in, I'm not um, providing for my family. And what happens if I'm, I'm injured or something happens or I can't practice. And it just made me rethink, there's gotta be something else out there. And even though I love dermatology, in fact, I love it so much. I always talk about it. Um, Mm -hmm. I thought I started listening to people like you and, and other derma or other physicians out there who are doing other things than just clinical medicine and realized there's this whole community out there and it's really exciting. It's really cool. And doctors, I think we undervalue ourselves. We are super smart. We work so hard and then we get into practice and I've been in practice probably about seven years. And I thought, well, 
well, what next? I mean, I, I love what I do, but I, you know, what, what's the next challenge for me? What's the next step? And what I realize is that there's a lot of bad skincare advice out there. And if dermatologists aren't the ones putting out good information, this void is going to be filled with perhaps information that's not that good or not. Yeah, that I valuable. mean, well, with influencers out there with uh, Instagram celebrities and like Allure and like, you know, just Cosmo. And that if that's where you're getting your skincare advice from, you know, it may not be the the tested, validated, you know, factual advice. And so why not have a powerful, smart, entertaining dermatologist out there sharing powerful strategies and techniques that are, that are very helpful, right? So yeah. I, I see a huge opportunity here for, for doctors like you. Yeah. And what I'm realizing too, I'm, I, I'm not a millennial or I'm right at the cusp. And um, these this younger generation, these Gen Zers, they are getting their information on social media. I wasn't even on, other than Facebook back in the day, I, I wasn't even on social media. But what I realized is that that's where a lot of these younger uh you know, guys and girls and, and I don't want to say kids, but this younger generation, that's where they're getting their information. And so you got to be there. You got to meet them where they are to give them information. And now I've realized there's tons of information. I get a lot of value from, from people out there. You just need to make sure you're following people who really are leaders and experts in their field. And you can get some really good information. And I realize I can reach a, a wider audience by doing this than actually seeing one by one someone in my office. That's awesome. I love how you're going to be a thought leader, influencer. You're also on the cutting edge of, of your dermatology practice in you know one of the top cities in the country, in Atlanta. So I think marrying the two and then maybe the, this leads to my next question. What's next for Dr. Mina? <laughs> What's, what, what are we what are we thinking about as 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 your future unfolds here? Well, I love again, I love dermatology. I love talking about skin, really wanting to grow my podcast, do more speaking engagements, um, perhaps consulting uh, mm. with with companies that maybe need a medical or dermatologist on board to sort of guide or be sort of the medical expert. And I still see myself practicing clinical dermatology and I just love it. It's a lot of fun and I love my patients, but also having this other component grow at the same time is really exciting for me. So still TBD, but I love just hearing what other smart doctors are doing and just trying to absorb as much information as I can. I love listening to these podcasts, hearing what doctors are doing. So hopefully this is inspiring to someone listening and um, really just any doctor out there listening that you being a, a doctor is wonderful, but there are also so many other things you can do as well. And that can really give you fulfillment beyond the four walls of your clinic. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love the advice you gave us about some of the strategies for our skin. I love all the sort of the entrepreneurship and sort of the visionary uh, growth you're having beyond uh, just a traditional practice. And so I wish you well in your journey and I can't wait to hear how things turn out. And guys, uh, if you want to reach Dr. Mina, what do you think the best way for them to get a hold of you? Yeah, well, they can either uh, follow my podcast and follow me on social media. I'm at Dr. Mina Skin. Or if you're in the Atlanta area, you can reach out to me at my office, Bachman Mina Derm Surgery. Guys, this will all be in the show notes. If you're in Atlanta, you want to get your skin checked out and maybe skin leveled up, you want to check out our clinic. And otherwise, follow her podcast. And I know I will. So thanks again, Dr. Mina, for being on the show. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed that episode. And until next time, be phenomenal. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Limitless MD. If you found value from this episode, I encourage you to share this episode with a friend and let me know by leaving a review. For more information, make sure you check out the links in the show notes below or simply visit vikramraya.com. Until next time, be phenomenal.